Hello, everyone. It's a rainy day today in New York. I'm staying home, keep myself warm today. I decided to explain about dashi today. Dashi means Japanese broth or stock, whichever you want to call it. Main Japanese broth ingredients are kombu, katsuobushi, niboshi, hoshishi dake. I want to explain these ingredients a bit deeper, but basic information. It might be a bit boring to some, but it would be helpful to understand Japanese cooking. First one is kombu. Kombu is a kelp. Kelp is a type of seaweed which grow on rocky places and where the cold current runs. So Japanese landscape is a perfect spot to grow kelp and especially around Hokkaido area. There are 45 different kinds of kelp in Japan and 95% of um, kelp is coming from Hokkaido area. There are four main kombu from Hokkaido. Kombu is like wine. Chefs play with the kombu depend on dishes they are making. They are great to use for dashi. First one called makombu. It is from south part of Hokkaido. It has elegant fragment and sweetness. This kelp could be up to 8 meter, 26 feet long and 30 centimeter, 1 foot wide. So basically, it is huge. And compared to others, it's thicker. Second one is called Rishiri Kombu. There is an island called Rishiri Kombu grow around that area called Rishiri Kombu. This kombu is hard and tough, so dashi comes out clear. It is sweet and salty and rich in umami flavor and a clean taste. The third one is Laos kombu. It grows on the east side of Hokkaido. It is rich and full body flavor. It is thick and soft. Once it boils it, all the flavor melts it to the liquid. So dashi turns a little bit clouded. It's not recommended to use for clean soup. We call osimono or for eat. This is perfect for kombu dashi by itself. The last one is Hidaka Kombu, which can get along Hidaka Coast. Hidaka Kombu is the most popular kombu for the household. It is reasonable and all-purpose kombu. It is soft and easy to boil and have strong sea aroma. This can be used for stock but also for eating as well. I was able to find these four kombu at Japanese supermarket in New York. So I decided to do kombu tasting. From the right, there are Laos kombu, Rishiri kombu, Makombu, and Hidaka kombu. Laos kombu is the thin and soft. This white part is umami, so don't wash them. Maybe you can rub and remove with the wet towel, but I don't. I let the piece of kombu in the water overnight and boil them to make the stock. Laos kombu has the most strong sea aroma, but had a mild almost sweet flavor. It was a very sensitive flavor. This one is Rishiri Kombu. It is pretty hard and thick. Aroma was less than Laos Kombu, but still smelled like the ocean. It was salty, had a strong umami flavor. I think it's perfect one if you want to enjoy kombu flavor. Chef from Kyoto tend to use this quite often. Makombu is the really large kelp, so it seems like they cut the edges and smooth the side. Compared to other three, it was green and it was quite thick and the liquid was sticky. The aroma was less. It didn't taste much. It was very sensitive flavor. It's supposed to be expensive and the chef from Osaka used this quite often. By the way, within the same kombu, there are different qualities, so the flavor changed slightly. See, it's pretty sticky. The last one is a Hidaka Kombu, which I've been using for a while. 
It is a middle thickness, so it, I understood this is easy one to use for household. It had a good aroma like a rishiri kombu. It was salty but didn't have a umami flavor. My favorite was the rishiri kombu because it, it was salty and had a umami flavor. Next essential ingredient for dashi is a katsuobushi, which is the skipjack tuna flakes and Spanish bonito, which you see them dancing on top of okonomiyaki and takoyaki. After skipjack tuna was simmered, small, fermented over six months, then shredded, they become katsuobushi. I'm showing now magurobushi, which is a strip tuna. Those might be the same to you, but me as a Japanese, actually they're pretty different. If you're interested in the process, check the link below or check first season of Mind of Chef by David Chan. I remember seeing him going to the katsuobushi factory to learn the process. Anyway, magurobushi is a katsuobushi but made with a strip tuna. Usually it's been removed, dark red with the broad part, so I can make clear flavor stock. The taste is more elegant and less punchy. This is a katsuobushi tool to make katsuobushi. There are two different kinds of katsuobushi called karebushi and arabushi. Karebushi is the one covered with mold. The color is white because of mold on the top of surface. This has an extra step to ferment it and then let it sit for six months and dry. This process helps to remove a fishy smell and break up the fat. From this katsuobushi, we can create smooth, rich umami flavored broth. Another one is called arabushi, which isn't fermented, so the stock has strong fishy and smoky aroma. We can play these, depend on dishes we are using for. Also, thickness of katsuobushi helps to control the flavor as well. Now, I want to show you how to make kombu dashi or kobu dashi. We call both kombu and kobu are the same. I showed this before when I made the miso soup. In order to make kobu dashi, you dehydrate kombu a few hours to overnight. This slow process helps melt the flavor to the water. You can put kombu directly to the pot as well. When it's ready to cook, you boil the water with the kelp, then remove the kelp right before start boiling because slimy texture and a harsh taste run into the broth. This is it to make kombu dashi. It's very simple. Usually we use this as a base, then mix with other dashi ingredients like katsuobushi. Awase dashi means brand broth. Awase is brand. Now I want to show you how to make awase dashi, which use with kombu and katsuobushi. After kombu dashi start boiling, you turn off the heat and put a handful of katsuobushi, then let it sit for like five minutes, so the flavor transfer to the broth. After that, you strain them. That's it. This is a very delicate broth. We use it for osimono, which is a clear soup, or for cooking as well. This first broth called ichiban dashi, ichiban mean first. Then we sometimes use these leftover kombu and katsuobushi again to make a niban dashi. Niban means second. You boil them again with the water for five minutes. Turn off the heat, add a handful of katsuobushi. Do the same process. This broth still has full of umami, stronger flavor than the first one, but do not have an elegant aroma. So it's good to use for miso soup, nimono, which is a simmered Japanese dishes. This is osuimono. I cook it for New Year. I will show you how to use this on different episode. I want to show you how I use those leftover. I save those little by little and keep it in the freezer. And when I have enough portion, I make tsukudani. I chop kombu and katsuobushi and then saute them with soy sauce, sake, mirin, and a little bit of water. I eat them as a side dish. The third ingredient is niboshi. I actually use this the most because I eat miso soup every day. The most popular way using niboshi dashi 
is a, for miso soup. We use this dashi for udon and ramen broth as well. It comes all different sizes. Niboshi is a fish and shellfish that cook with salted water and dried. The most popular niboshi is made with anchovy and sardine. But also, we call niboshi for baby frying fish, red snapper, baby shrimps, and scallops. As long as they go through the same process, we call them niboshi. Dashi is full of nutrients like PhD, EPA, iron, vitamin D. I'm sharing two different sizes of niboshi. Small one has a less fat, so dashi comes out clear and light. On the other hand, bigger ones carry more fat that dashi comes out rich and complex. You can play them depend on dishes you're cooking. I usually use large niboshi for miso soup, but maybe small one is good for udon broth. This large niboshi is already removed the head and then the guts, but usually it comes with it. If you make broth with the heads and guts on, that she would have a bit bitter flavor and a fish smell. It creates punchy complex dashi. If you're using for strong flavor dashi, like ramen, this is perfect. This is how you remove the heads and guts to remove the niboshi dashi. I showed this before when I cooked the miso soup. You let dehydrate niboshi in the water for a few hours to overnight, then boil them for 5 to 20 minutes. Meantime, remove the form if there is. Some people fry niboshi for a few minutes before dehydrate to remove the fishy smell and add it more aroma, but I don't bother. That's it. The last important ingredient is a dry shiitake. I use dry shiitake by itself for cooking, like I showed you on the gyoza's episode, but also shiitake broth as well. It's perfect for somen. My grandma always made somen dipping sauce with a dashi shiitake. Somen is a Japanese thin noodle like angel hair. Dry shiitake has 10 times more vitamin D than the regular shiitake, so try to use it instead of fresh one. Making Shiitake dashi is super easy but time consuming. Just dehydrate in the water for 12 to 24 hours. That's it. When I use the shiitake itself, I freeze dashi individual and in a container. So whenever I want to use it, I just defreeze it. Then if I make a dashi and don't need to use the shiitake itself, I chop them and I freeze them for cooking. Now I want to show you some instant dashi I use. Nowadays, most of Japanese households rely on instant dashi because they are easier to use and less time consuming. My friend introduced me this brand dashi called Kayanoya about 10 years ago. Since then, I've been using them a lot. Every time I go back to Japan, I bring back a few bags of this. But now, they expand their business to the US, so you can buy them on online or Japanese supermarkets in the US. This doesn't have a chemical seasoning, preservative, and additive, it's, so it's very healthy. This main stock is made from two different kinds of niboshi, katsuobushi, makonbu, and sea salt. This one is a niboshi dashi. It has a two different kinds of niboshi, makonbu, dry shiitake, and sea salt. We call these awase dashi, like I mentioned before, because they're branded stock. They also sell vegetable stock made with garlic, celery, carrots, and cabbage. Good thing about instant dashi is a powder format, so you don't water down the dishes. You can add it these to your sauteed dishes, pasta, rice, dressing, whatever dishes you're cooking to. You can break the bag, sprinkle them, use the bag to make stock or soup. I sometimes make my own powder stock when I have a leftover of these ingredients as well. Then this is a hondashi. I grew up with it. This is the most popular brand instant dashi in Japan. Again, this is a powder format, very easy to use. That's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions, please leave the comment. It will be helpful for me to create another video. Thank you for watching.